Good morning, everybody. About 8 o'clock, 3rd of August. Today is going to be starting prepping the body for paint, the interior portion of it. Before I do that, I want to get all the other pieces out here, the doors, the boot lids, stuff like that. Give them a once over and make sure there's no other paint that they need and no other blocking and, and stuff like that. I'm pretty sure that stuff is done, but it's been a while since I've looked at everything. Because once I uh, start to get into the phase of putting down the ceiling primer, I want to minimize the amount of mess that I make in here as far as block sanding and painting and all that kind of stuff. All this tarp is going to come down. It's going to get all mopped. Everything's going to get cleaned again and everything like that. So I need to make sure that there's no more gross um, dust making evolutions yet to do. The uh, do need another round of epoxy on the inside in here. If for nothing else, then to get these bolts. Also needs to get blocked in here again. It's not in, uh, or at least at least sanded down in here. It's not very smooth. The outside, however, is, is pretty good. This uh, needs to get cleaned up, but it still needs to get uh, sanded down and everything like that. So I'll probably do this in another coat of epoxy as well. So still some uh, still some more work to do. So I've decided to switch gears a little bit. I just don't have it in me today to to block and do all that stuff I was working on the Z Fender already all morning but you would think I would have done a little bit more of this up to this point but I figured as I was going through and learning to paint that I kind of would teach myself as I painted so I'm struggling a little bit with some dry spots and everything so what I really want to do now is I've got the, I got the gun here with a 1.3 millimeter tip full of lacquer thinner which I know is not going to be quite the right consistency but I want to get a feel for air pressure adjustments and things like that and kind of go pretty broad and see what happens as I go through. So I'm not going to really talk at all during this thing. I'll, I'll try to make a summation. Obviously you got the gun here, I don't have the cup on it. Regulator and the desiccant filter. So my compressor is set at its own regulator as high as I can get it. So it's set essentially what the compressor discharge is at, 110, 115 pounds or so. Then you put the regulator on here. Plug the gun in and you can see that it shows at about 100 or so, a little bit over 100, because that's what it's reading. And when you pull the trigger, it drops, it drops down to whatever you want to spray at. So in this case, it's only 10 pounds. That's 26 pounds. You could hear the massive increase in airflow. So now that, that's set. So we'll take this back off and I'll put the desiccant filter on there to show you what it does to the air pressure. Alright, so now I got the desiccant filter in there. Regulator is still set where it was. I didn't touch that. And watch what pressure does. So now pressure goes to about 48 pounds. And that's the back pressure that this is providing since I didn't adjust the regulator at all. That's going to be pushing that amount of air. Now you, I'll set it down to where I've been setting it since Oh, I don't know, the first day I ever painted. So you can hear the huge decrease in volume and decrease in flow. So I consider myself a relatively intelligent guy, but I didn't realize that that was going to be a thing. I just set this up the way that I thought it was going to be set up and uh, I didn't take into account the backflow. So I pointed out the Harbor Freight one the other day that it didn't seem to work all that well. Well, it, I'm sure it works just fine. I didn't have the regulator set up properly. So the regulator needs to go next to the gun and then anything after that can go after that, but the regulator's gotta be right on top of the gun. Obviously this is gonna have a huge impact on my painting. I'm uh, almost doubling from 26 to 48 pounds. I'm almost doubling the amount of air 
and uh, the volume that I'm putting through. So that's going to totally change the way that I paint, I think. And uh, frankly, I'm a little nervous. It's going to change my compressor running and, uh, and all that stuff. So it's, uh, it's going to be interesting. And I got the boot here, and then I'm just going to paint the underside of it. I took the rack out, blocked everything out. You can see how horrible the inside of this boot is. I'm not going to worry about it or fix it. Um, the other side is what I worried about. But I had used a paintbrush under here to get up underneath these, these parts because that's where that stuff starts to rust out from. And uh, I was able to sand a lot of that out, not all of it. So that'll... Uh, fill in a little bit I'm sure and then hopefully it won't be quite as obvious as it was I got the uh, bolts in there like I did with the bonnet just to get them painted I still got to take this this stuff over a little bit more but otherwise I am going to uh, shoot it with two coats of epoxy it's inducing now I kind of forgot about it so I've got a little bit of time to wait here and I'll uh, show you what's up with the paint gun setup all right I got the gun here I got it set for about 26 pounds Right now I've got the fluid, I'm going to pull it out one turn. This thing actually gives a kick now when you pull the trigger. I'm actually kind of nervous. Try turning a quarter. Definitely seems to be a larger fan, which obviously makes sense. I'm going to try turning a half. You can see as the fluid, as I'm increasing my fluid size, the fan's getting bigger. Kind of walking it up. Again, makes sense. No, no runs yet. One and a quarter. Or one and three quarters. Looks like I'm starting to get a little bit of sagging now. Try two turns. Yeah, one and three quarters, it's starting to, starting to fish out a little bit in there. Definitely seeing the run in here. So we'll go back to one and a half. All right, so we're at one and a half turns. One little final practice down at the bottom there. Now I'm going to start laying paint. Wish me luck. Well, that's quite a difference and dare I say I think it's a, a difference for the positive checking out the first coat it looks better to me I, it's hard to say really but I don't see there's definitely no dry spots I tried to paint the same way so that I'm not tricking myself into thinking that I just you know saved a lot of uh, a lot of extra work maybe and stuff but uh, it, it definitely looks a little smoother and a little better than uh, than what I'm used to seeing. So the compressor seemed to handle it just fine. I don't think it kicked on at all. Better than it was, I think. All right, coat number two. Second coat's down. Happy with the way that it came out. I, uh, I think it looks better than my recent epoxy jobs have been. I'm not sure if it's just because I'm hypersensitive right now or what, but the, uh, I'm, I'm happy that I don't need to really seem to change my method at all, which is good. The compressor was fine. Uh, the paint use was the same and all that kind of stuff. So I think, uh, I think I'm sitting pretty good. One, uh, one thing you may have noticed is I got a lot of, I started to run out of paint when I was in this area over here and that's just because I had the um, gun tilted so far forward that the, the paint wasn't enough paint in the in the pot to to fill the the supply line so that uh, I kind of went back over that but otherwise lesson learned alright everybody thanks so much for watching please leave a comment below tell me what you think learned a lot of good stuff in the last two or three days 
So, uh, yeah, thanks for uh, thanks for the continuing critique. I think if uh, Eric and Robert hadn't said something about the painting technique and all that kind of stuff, that's that's kind of what started this. I think uh, I probably would not have figured this out. So, thanks again. Cheers.